Uh, so, uh, this recent buzz around AI and uh, you know generative AI, Chat GPT, right? Uh, all of this uh, seems like a deja vu to me. Uh, they told you all I had a, a long career, right? Uh, and uh, for folks who've been in the field long enough, uh, you all know why. But for those of you all who all are uh, like fairly new, uh, I'm going to uh, kind of take you all back in time a little bit, right? Uh, let's let's go back to 2016, 2017, right? Uh, according to Guardian, uh, that was the year AI came of age. There was a lot of AI going on uh, at that time. Uh, there were uh, like a, a lot of uh, you know transcription services, AI based. So basically, AI went from becoming science fiction uh, to you know more concepts that were applicable uh, to to your uh, everyday life. And so we had uh, you know a, a lot of like uh, self-driving cars were uh, you know uh, kind of on. Then that's when it all started. Uh, that's also the time uh, IBM uh, had launched what kind of uh, the Watson in IBM was getting uh, popularity. Uh, the Watson's, uh, you know, cognitive capabilities, it was all cognitive capabilities and machine learning at that point of time. That's kind of what the AI space was uh, during then. And uh, IBM had launched a, a lot of initiatives uh, to try and incorporate Watson's AI capabilities into uh, every single you know, product as best as they could. Right? So that was the directive at that point of time. Go figure out how you can make your products better. Go figure out how you can embed AI in your products uh, to kind of leverage Watson. Right? A every product wanted the Watson tag, and you had to work hard for it. Right? And so we did a lot of you know, idea generation generation days and hackathons. Hackathons are a thing in IBM uh, where we spend you know, days uh, trying to come up with like innovative ideas of what we can do uh, to incorporate that. We recently had one for uh, the gen uh, AI capabilities. We call those Watson X. But this one here, I'm talking about the Watson uh, hackathons like long ago in 2016. right? Uh, I was leading a portfolio of uh, products at that time uh, that helped digital marketers create plans and manage uh, their marketing campaigns. Right? And so as part of our idea uh, generation days and as part of our hackathons, uh, we were tasked with and uh, you know go figure out how you can implement how you can in incorporate AI in your capabilities. And that's what we did, you know uh, uh, like three or four days or one week's worth of ideas uh, and then here's what we had. you know we could do predictions, we could do you know insights, we could give recommendations, uh, we could help simplify search for you all, we could leverage natural language capabilities and all of that. And, and you know these were like our ideas that the team came up with. And then we decided, okay, let's run this by the users. You know? Let's see what excites them. Let's, let's check with our users what they really uh, want to see or what, uh, what would make them feel empowered. Right? And so when we reached out to the users, we, we really had, you know, at that point of time, two kinds of users, uh, the line of business users, uh, who were mostly marketers, uh, very comfortable with their day job. They knew everything about digital marketing, but they were not fairly comfortable or fairly aware of the technology at that point of time, right? So they knew their job, but they sort of knew AI. Everybody had seen Terminator, so they all knew about robots, right? Uh, AI at that point of time mostly translated into robots and the concerns at that point of time were you know, very real around, uh, are you going to make me interact with robots? Okay, incorporating AI, does it mean you're going to replace your system behind the scenes with some kind of robots, right? How is it going to know uh, to recommend, right? How is it going to, like I've been in the field for 15 years, I know what I'm doing. How does it know what it's doing? How is it going to generate its recommendations, right? And we had to tell them that you know it's going to kind of, uh, it has models behind it and you know it's going to uh, work with the models and it's going to learn as it goes and it's going to get better with time and that made them really skeptical I was like okay so are you going to monitor what I do at my job are you going to you know uh, watch what I'm doing are you uh, going to then generate reports and send to my boss you know then nobody was you know liking all, all that part so it was like generally skepticism not a lot of awareness uh, you know um, People thought they knew, but they had some concepts confused, and so they didn't know kind of what to do. Uh, mostly intimidation, mostly you know, unsurety about where is the expertise coming from, right? That was about the regular line of business users. Then we had uh, what we call the technical marketers, who were you know aware of the technology at the same time, right? And so they were not as confused about uh, what 
it meant they they knew they understood you know how uh, ai would help uh, make their lives better their concerns were a little on the flip side they were worried about whether we would get it right for them in the sense uh, when we started implementing ai capability so what the feedback you know it was like a legacy product it was there for a long time uh, it every product has its quirks especially enterprise products which have been there for a long time right and people have spent quite a lot of time trying to get used to it trying to figure out the quirks in it trying to work around it they have a routine they know i need to do these 10 steps right to get my job done and and they were all fairly comfortable with that so their worry was you know is all of this going to slow me down i'm not going to wait for you i already you know i have so many things to do i'm a busy person i need to get things done now if you start throwing recommendations at me when i'm trying to do these things hey do this you know hey do that hey hey you know are you going to slow me down i don't have time for all of that right uh, that was one part the other one was you know again to do with you know i've been in this field for so long so your better recommendations one they better be good right they better be on the lines of what i would have done anyways given the situation right because if it's counter intuitive then i'm going to be confused and i'm going to trust my intuition i'm not going to go with your recommendations right because i kind of have been in the field i know what i'm doing and i'm just going to trust my gut feel right the second is unless you tell me how you are generating those recommendations back it up with you know some kind of a reasoning tell me how you have arrived at at that reasoning and then it will help me to trust it better right that said i am not just going to blindly accept your recommendations okay i want to kind of test it out with a small sample first and see if it really works see if it gives me the results you are saying it will give right and if it doesn't i just want the ability to turn the whole damn thing off you know just give me a way to do my job like i do it i don't even want the ai so give a switch turn it on turn it off clearly mark this is ai this is regular stuff so i know that you know okay this thing i i need to test it out i like it i keep it if not i just turn it off so that was kind of like the whole uh, you know feedback that we had uh, listened to at that point of time okay uh, back to today all of this gen x uh, you know this gen ai uh, this ai uh, capabilities and then we are in that space where you know all product companies are again in this hyper mode of enabling ai for everything right uh, what has changed with the users okay uh, so ha has has it changed a lot right sure i mean the awareness has increased right uh, there's a lot of information about ai available on the uh, social media now on, on basically every single source right uh, people have asked chat gpt itself you know tell me what you are right and and it has done that right so uh, but yes there there's like not as much fear a uh, factor uh, now people are not intimidated people have used ai one form or another people are fairly comfortable talking to chatbots and then all of that right but there is still this real gap of you know who are these people who are really aware right people like you and me people who are in technology people who are early professionals right people who are uh, designers who are in the product space who own products who want to make their products better so all of this excitement now is in that category of people there is still this other category that that still exists you know the older users the long time users of your products who are still kind of in between that i am aware and i am not aware kind of a space they they know a lot more terms these days because you know there's enough whatsapp enough you know facebook enough chat gpt everywhere and and they've used it but uh, there is a recent survey that forbes ran um, in july of 2023 right and the numbers were fairly astonishing there so 77% of the folks are still concerned about misinformation being generated by ai so that trust factor or the trust issue is still there right people are really really concerned now about their jobs being taken away by these ai capabilities right so while they are fairly comfortable uh, using ai as consumers they are really skeptical about allowing ai in their work life right because they are worried that the moment ai is you know uh, they are teaching it to take away its their jobs right basically and and they don't even want to do that right and so job displacement is a real fear right privacy concerns like i said people are fairly comfortable with uh, ai tracking uh, things like their social media usage things like you know what do they buy where do they drive and and you know any kind of recommendations that you might generate or ai might generate around that 
all that is good but are they really open to ai stepping into their work life trying to monitor their work usage not so much right not not really not so much and so all of these concerns haven't gone away right and so uh, when we start off or to look at designing for uh, incorporating ai capabilities or when we start out uh, you know reaching out to our users trying to figure out uh, what would make their life better right uh, we all our user research mostly is centered around you know what are your goals what are you trying to achieve what are your pain points how are you using our products and you know all of that right what i am trying to say is maybe maybe if you are trying to pitch in ai capabilities we should also try and do a little hopes and fears exercise with them to try and understand you know are they comfortable if not why not right what are they afraid of you know what are they worried about right what are they hopeful about they actually there are use cases where people will tell you yes you know something like this would be nice so it's nice to kind of get that uh, insights from your users uh let's look at you know deeper motivations rather than immediate <coughs> needs because you know they might need something today but ai capabilities are here to stay they learn over time they get better with time so focus on those kind of you know sustainable long term needs when you're trying to think about how you can make your uh, you know how you can leverage ai capabilities to make your products better uh that said yes we want to make our users feel empowered uh but again i think the first step to do that is you know understand a little bit about what is bothering them take some time to educate your users about how we are going to take uh, how we are going to make their life better uh, you know uh, how maybe you know a little bit of uh, level setting expectations around this is what this means this is what this means this is how we are leveraging these capabilities and this is how it's going to make your life better right help uh, alleviate some of the fears and and then i think we'll have a little less resistance in terms of user adoption so uh, that's it i guess uh, Oh and I'm an IBMer by the way as she mentioned and we are hiring so please feel free to join <laughs> Thank you